Are we back to school again this episode? We had a lot of, uh... Lloyd and your spy ex-family drama. Look at this dude! Someone joined the Body Improvement Club. He runs so elegantly. <laughs> elegantly descends the stairs. Birds. Never forget to worship your academic superiors. <laughs> Look at those elegant calves! <laughs> you know what? I'll give it to the guy. He knows his elegance. And he plays chess. Henderson. For a second I got confused with the terrible teacher from Jujutsu Kaisen. I was all ready to hate him. Is that how you pour tea? I guess I'm not elegant enough to know. <laughs> you would hope he would say that about kids, right? It wasn't a bad thing, though. The fact that Anya's on the radar like this. Fair enough. One thing that was interesting about being a teacher and forming relationships with students over the years, it's funny to observe the students you end up liking. Teachers definitely have favorites, and there's no, no question about that. It's somewhat intuitive to say out loud, but the students you end up forming the deepest connections with are the ones that you pay the most attention to, and there are a lot of different reasons for that attention. Speaking of Jujutsu Kaisen, there's a crossover here because I think it was Junpei that said, the opposite of love is not hate but indifference. There's something about giving attention to something that creates feedback in your mind and heart that tells you that this is something really important to you. Maybe a good reason to be careful not to focus on the wrong things. But in this case, Anya is such a huge figure in their in their eyes, especially Henderson, because she happens to be a really sweet girl at heart. There's no doubt that she's going to be a favorite. There are probably a ton of really great sweet kids in the school who will not get the same level of, of attention as Anya because Anya acted out, if that makes sense. It's not necessarily a bad thing to get in trouble. Even looking at media figures who, who receive scandal. I just have this feeling a lot of the time that even though the initial attention is negative, it actually often ends up helping them in the long term. Once the initial controversy blows over, you often find they're able to rebound in a way that transcends their original career. Although it depends on the transgression, of course. There are some things people just will not forgive or forget. But that's not the case for Anya decking her rival, you know? The same thing applies for Damien in regards to Anya. Clearly already likes her, even though it's hard for him to admit, or he doesn't understand what's going on. <laughs> I feel like that was pretty basic, but all right. Just gotta butter them up, butter them up. Like how they framed that let's walk quietly in the corridor bulletin. Yeah, it was pointed out to me. I didn't notice it at first. His parents are not present. Sympathy for Damien. Big shoes to fill. Somewhat ignored in favor of the older brother, maybe? That let's walk quietly in the corridor looms as big as Damien's feelings of neglect. <laughs> At least Crab and Goyle believe in him. Do you want Stella's Damien? What does Damien want? <laughs> I know he's at least like six years old, but... Oh, dodgeball. Dodgeball was a very visceral choice for sport competitions for Stella's among kids. Nothing like the school sanctioning getting to hit your classmates in the face with balls. I need to tone down the elegance a little bit though. <laughs> it's just too elegant for me. Elegance overload. What does he do in his free time? Uh, this. This probably is his free time. He loves it so much there's no distinction between free time and work. We already apologize. No one talks to Becky that way. <laughs> I hope this is a just a Henderson episode. I would actually love that. Rumor spreading. Is this gonna be dodgeball training? I actually feel like this is kind of a cool concept for kids. We only got stickers, but eh, it's sort of like Stella's seems so much more official. It's the game where you dodge balls. Coming from here, that could be taken literally. <laughs> and she's very athletic. Yeah, I'll get some your training. I feel like with all this training, I'm just gonna turn, turn into a just a super beast under your influence eventually. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so much focus on this painting. I, I feel like I'm being paranoid, but the sign has fallen over twice and they keep focusing on it. What does it mean? 
夜さんに任せたことだし。Guess it's a measure of intelligence knowing when to step back. But I've heard this actually is a really great technique for performance. And I have some minor experiences with that. You know, visualizing the way things will go, imagining yourself doing certain movements, for example. For about 10 years, a group of my high school classmates and I did a Thanksgiving tackle football game. And one of the first ones was a really big deal because it was all the kids from the Bronx versus all the kids in Queens. And I was nervous about tackling. So I remember the day before, I like meditated and imagined myself going through the whole process of tackling people. And it could be a coincidence, but I feel like I felt the effects of that the next day. Like I was just throw, <laughs> just throwing my body out there. <laughs> it probably has something to do with separating the, the layers from thought to action. I think one of the purposes of conscious thought in general is to abstract and reach for the new. If you just look at actions humans perform, the things that are the oldest are the most thoughtless, like breathing. There's a strength that comes from rigidity and structure and order, and that's mitigated or lost somewhat in areas of flexibility or adaptation. So conscious thought is probably best thought of as a tool to deal with the new or unknown, but then it's a matter of internalizing that and practicing it so that it's rigid. Again, why it's important not to focus on the wrong things because they'll become ingrained and hard to change. But I think with sports, If you are confident in your technique, you want to get it to a point where it's thoughtless. And I think visualization helps in that process. So bad for these kids. So they're about to go against Anya and dodgeball. They're going to be dodging death. No training would be complete without the under the waterfall. Me and my friend did that in Hawaii. We found this waterfall and just sat there under it, under the crushing weight for like an hour. <laughs> Mama's ruthless training. <laughs> Accurate. These kids don't know what they have coming. We just had a whole sports anime in like five minutes. You're first. <laughs> oh, they're in the same team? Can't even look at her. We all know where this is going. No pressure on Damien's shoulders. He's just free to be a fun-loving kid. Anya already being smart enough, wise enough to have sympathy for him. Maybe partly because of her own experience. I feel like you threw that out the window when you chose dodgeball. Watch out for Becky though, I feel like she might be a sleeper. And dodgeball intel flashback? You're gonna take out their ace or what? We got a ringer? Why is Bill Watkins there? Bill Watkins is a what in the world? Did they not notice him there before? <laughs> Bazooka Bill? This is a kid? Why is why is he okay, I'm confused. Why is he here? That doesn't mean it's not good strategy. Who arranged this game? Who let Bazooka Bill in this? I see Buffalo Bill or Bazooka Bill skipped leg day, or at least he skipped calf day. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Is that technique though. Spectacular. How big is Daddy? He's like 12 feet tall. Really M. Bison vibes. He has no business in the military. He needs to be an athlete. He needs to play every sport simultaneously. You thought Stella's were gonna be easy, Becky? Oh no. Oh no, Becky. I was rooting for you. I can see this ending up in a situation where Anya and Damien are back to back, fighting together as a last stand. Did they really do this? Damien really making the most out of his parents' absenteeism. I'm just gonna believe this is canon and okay. <laughs> so much for that. And then he caught a spirit bomb. At least he trained. That's a very graceful formation G from the crab. Are you not out if you catch it in this version? I guess not. Ooh, a special full breaking technique. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Dedication. Nothing could be a greater honor dying in the service of Lord Damien. <laughs> Yeah, that's how I feel about most of my memories. And dead. <laughs> Top 10 saddest anime deaths. <laughs> are the other kids gonna play? Or okay, oh, he's also dead. You lost when giant Bazooka Bill was born. <laughs> From then on, it was over. She can read minds too. Curveball. 
I mean, she doesn't even need to read his mind, just yell that out loud. Oh no, this poor kid. Here we go. We're getting down to it, side by side. Wait, what? These are rules of dodgeball that I'm unfamiliar with. Damien, you two could be a hero. Or not. You can let her go down. No, who, who took it? Who did it? Oh, she caught it! He caught it. That was such a great fake out. Damn, Damien. Oh, that makes him out. The sacrifice, though. Damien's got a good heart. How can they not be friends from this point on? Damien suddenly looking like a great character in this episode. He has a sympathetic backstory, a heart of gold covered by a rough exterior. This is a really great concept for this episode because it gives them a common goal. That's how some of the strongest rivalries turn into the deepest friendships because rivalry is respect and recognition of ability. And if those talents are aligned on the same side, it's a recipe for real alliance. It was always going to come down to Anya. Arrow of light, huh? Parting the ocean that wasn't there. His friend might be, though. I'm still just flabbergasted by the existence of Bazooka Bill. It's the most intense game of dodgeball perhaps ever played. His anime dodgeball. And 360 shot. <laughs> the power of anime. Making routine daily events seem like saving the world. My whittle hands. <laughs> Even... Even Buffalo Bill knows it. Oh, what happened? I mean, she's a little tiny person after all. Oh no. Oh, the game is not dodgeball. The game is elegance. You gotta keep that in mind. Play the right games. Sometimes winning is not winning. <laughs> Two points for Gryffindor. Yeah, there we go. I really do feel like Anya's gonna max out the merits in both directions, both good and bad. Bolts and Stellas. So much for that. They just cost themselves a Stella, perhaps. Damn. Yeah, until you get like five years of that training. In the long term, she's gonna be a physical beast. This is the kind of episode I was looking for for a while. The, the no upset goodness. I like how we're going back and forth between Anya and Lloyd and Yor, but I have a feeling as everything starts to fall into place, it's all gonna come together, which is super exciting. I just can't get over Bazooka Bill. There's something so horrifying about that, and the teachers who are out allowed that matchup to happen. But yeah, it's definitely clear now that Damien and Anya is, is gonna happen, which means their mission is gonna be a success, even if Lloyd doesn't even realize it himself yet. I feel like this episode worked really well as just a standalone dodgeball story with two rival school members, and of course the focus on Elegant Henderson was just a bonus.